Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video. Okay, so in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the differences between the Leo Sun, the Leo Moon and the Leo Rising. Now this series is an updated version of a series that I made about four years ago on the channel, so back in 2017. But um, within the space of four years, I would like to hope that I'm able to bring new interesting pieces of information to the table. Now, I do recommend that you watch this entire video, even if you're here just for your sun or your moon or your rising. Watch the entire thing because things can interlink and also things can change <laughs> depending upon your sun, moon and rising combinations. But with that being said, make sure to comment down below your thoughts and opinions on today's topic. Yeah, let me know your feedback because I do appreciate that. However, before we do dive into today's video, certainly make sure that you give this video a like if you like it. Also make sure to subscribe if you have not already and to of course click that little bell icon so that you can keep yourself updated with further content from myself. And one more quick thing to mention and that is that I have some merchandise pieces that are available. So go to the link in the description box below if you are interested. Okay, so with all of those introductions out of the way, let's do this. Okay, so just to give a brief overview of the sun and moon and rising within astrology, well, these placements are often referred to as your big three within the astrological community. And many people like to mention them as a way to express their very basic personality. But naturally, however, as most of us know here, astrology goes much, much deeper than these three components but I still think it's good to learn about these placements, especially if you are a beginner. And even if you are more advanced, still watch the video because who knows, maybe you will learn something new. All right, so to begin, let's look at the sun in Leo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some key words associated with the sun in astrology. Read those key words, take them in. But what does it mean if these key words are being combined with the sign or with the archetype of Leo? Well, it creates an energy of one's identity and individuality being based on self-expression, liveliness, creativity, and enthusiasm, along with an energy of conscious fun, play, and entertainment. Likewise, it creates an energy of purposeful romance, storytelling, and generosity, as well as an energy of a wild and dramatic self-expression. Plus, it also creates an energy of seeking applause for one's hobbies and for being one's self. <laughs> But what does this specifically say about you if you were born under the sun sign, meaning that you have the sun in Leo natally? Well, it suggests that you are intrinsically aware of your passions and of your hobbies and of your pleasures, the things that you find pleasure within in life. And so therefore you may consciously and purposefully align yourself towards pursuing such things. So if you know you really enjoy watching movies, for example, then you'll make it a priority to watch a movie every other day or every weekend. Or let's say that you love going for ice cream on a hot summer's day, then you'll get super excited as you make your way to that ice cream parlor with your partner. Or maybe you like creating content for Instagram or on YouTube then most likely than not, you'll place much of your energy and much of your life force and your vitality into this particular hobby of yours. Or maybe you're really into fashion or beauty or music, dance, art, same thing. Basically, Leo Sons, you know what lights you up and fuels your fire. And so 
you'll show a determination and a strong will towards ensuring that that fire keeps burning. <laughs> and you might also be quite stubborn in the process as you refuse to take no for an answer. So for example, maybe you strongly dislike it when you're asked to endure a hobby or an event that you know is just gonna be flat out boring. Or maybe you've clashed with friends or with family or with partners over different interests and likes Maybe you want to go to a karaoke bar, but then your friend wants to just have a chilled night in, or maybe you want an exciting and thrilling trip away with your partner, but then the partner is more interested in a relaxing, chilled out type of trip. Yeah, these clashes, as minor as they are, or as minor as they may appear, they might fluster you a little bit. However, this is not to say that you aren't open to new ideas or you're not open to trying new things, but maybe there are times whenever you need some persuasion <laughs> or you need an extra shove. And besides, if or when you do give that new thing a go, you might find that it becomes a new fine love or an interest or a passion. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe I missed out on this or how am I only discovering this now? Or I can't believe I've never eaten here until today. This food, it is incredible. So just following on from this point, it seems as if your hobbies and your interests, they they sort of become you. <laughs> they become a part of your ego and a part of your identity. In fact, it could be suggested that your interests make their way into so many different aspects of your life, from your friendships to your romantic relationships, from your spare time activities to your career. And as you're going about confidently expressing your admiration for the things that you love, you do so with such enthusiasm, with such a liveliness, with so much energy. You might actually scar people off with how full on you can be. <laughs> and so in this respect, you're the type of people who can come on strong, Leo Sons. You sure know how to make an impact on those that you meet and interact with and you know how to waken others up with your charisma and with your sunny disposition. Though on the other hand, it's also this loud and wild personality that can either make others feel intimidated or make others feel annoyed by how extra you appear to them. So people who are insecure, people who are more timid or more reserved, these people might not take a liking to your character. They may feel a little bit uncomfortable with your grand and regal self-expression. And when you find out that you're not everybody's cup of tea, you might A, take it very personally, or B, <sighs> shrug it off as a way to say, well, you know what? People not liking me isn't my problem. It's their problem. And I suppose that this leads me on to confidence and self-love. Because the thing about this is that you are striving to become this bold and confident and self-assured individual. But there are times there are times whenever you feel not so hot, times whenever you take other people's opinions of you to heart, times whenever you want to step away from the spotlight because your ego has been bruised. So this could look like someone rejecting your love or your affection towards them, for example. Or maybe you've experienced jealousy and rivalry from people that you thought were your friends. Or maybe you've been let down by someone that you trusted, by someone who 
you were fiercely loyal to, which by the way, when it comes to your romantic relationships, you are typically such loyal people. You will go out of your way to show your appreciation and you'll be generous and accepting of that other person. You'll also most likely be big on giving gifts as a way to show your love and you'll make it your priority to arrange dates and events. Yeah, when you are romantically involved with someone, you make a conscious effort to show your warmth and your hospitality and your admiration. Likewise, the same thing could be said when it comes to your friendships in that you are probably quite the loyal friend. You are probably a friend who is extremely generous and I also just want to go back a little bit here. Yes, you may make reserved people, more shy people, a little bit uncomfortable, but I also think at the same time that it's you, the sons, that can help bring these types of people out of their shell. It's you that can help these people be more open and be more expressive themselves. Still, however, as I was saying, whenever you are hurt, whenever your ego is bruised, you do not handle things very well. Especially if you're at a stage where you're experiencing a low point in your life, especially during a time when you're not feeling like yourself and you're a bit more vulnerable. Then again, if you're at a point where you feel more confident and you're more sure of yourself, I think you're going to be less susceptible to other people's mean attitudes and behaviors or towards their judgments or their criticisms. You're going to be less likely to put up with people who are disloyal or people who are cold. Now, as I was getting at a moment ago, some astrologers like to refer to the sun sign as representative of the individual who we are striving to become, along with the ascendant slash the rising sign representing our life path. And so therefore, Leo suns, maybe you are striving to become this confident person who understands that, well, at least accepts that they're not here to be liked by everyone or to please everyone. You're here to do the things you love and that you enjoy without having to explain yourself. And likewise, perhaps you're striving to become this fun, loving, playful person who has a huge heart. Which is interesting because you're usually the types of people who radiate so much energy and so much aliveness and even if you're not the most outwardly you know loudest person in the room it's this aliveness and this childlike spirit that can be felt it can be seen by everyone around you and so in this respect you are eye-catching as you effortlessly grab other people's attention Maybe as a child you would put on shows or you would play dress up or you would attend sports classes for fun or you would go to after school clubs, anything to get you having a good time. And even if you're not the most extroverted or talkative Leo Sun individual, maybe you would entertain yourself a lot at home as a child or maybe you would play with your siblings, or maybe you would paint and create in your room. Perhaps you more extroverted Leo sons also took part in these types of things. Though essentially, I think you're aware of your creative side and of all the games you want to join in on, so to speak. Perhaps in this respect, you place much of your focus and much of your attention uh, towards your creative hobbies and towards your leisure activities. And so we often see you dancing or singing, performing or entertaining others in some way. Though I do wonder, is it that you inherited some of these performative or artistic traits from your father or from a father figure 
growing up. For example, maybe he urged you to perform. <laughs> he urged you to put yourself out there. Perhaps you were strongly encouraged by him to be seen for your gifts or for your talents, or maybe your father made you feel special and loved and really appreciated. This father influence in your life who would applaud you for your performance or for doing a great job. Someone who fully embraced your creativity and your artistic side. Then again, maybe your father worked within a creative field or within an artistic field himself. Or maybe he was just creative on his own, within his spare time. He had some type of creative hobbies that he was doing. Or maybe he even worked for a company as a leader of some sort. And so he inspired you. Though on the other hand, perhaps for some of you Leo sons, this father wasn't present. Perhaps he was too self-absorbed or maybe he directed so much of his attention um, towards his profession or towards a leisure interest of his. Then again, maybe this father figure gambled or maybe he spent a lot of his time catching up on sports or just in front of the sporting channel on the television. Could even be a situation where he would give you gifts or money as a way to show his love. Yes, but yet when it came to his time or his hobbies or his profession, he would prioritize these things. Though there, another thing that could be suggested is that for some of you Leo sons, maybe you have been spoiled greatly by your father. Maybe in his eyes, you are his special little prince or princess and you could do nothing wrong. And if this is the case, maybe you grow to become spoiled and bratty and obnoxious and kind of lazy. Yeah, there can be a level of entitlement here when it comes to you Leo sons. Or maybe some of you actually clash with your father because you don't feel like you were given enough attention or enough love and appreciation. So I hope you can see from these examples that things can play out in many different ways here. But whatever the relationship with this father influence, maybe there's a part of you that wants to make your father proud. Or maybe there's a part of you who strives for your father's applause and approval. So for example, perhaps it's really important to you that your father approves of your romantic partner. Or perhaps you seek your father's appreciation whenever you start a new job, for example, or whenever you have a child. It's almost like you're looking for this father's approval and you're seeking validation from this man who raised you. And if you are a Leo son individual who grew up without a father influence in your life, then this absence, maybe that can be felt quite deeply. And maybe the absence can be difficult to cope with. But then on the other hand, perhaps you learn to parent yourself. You learn to be that heroic force within your own life to kind of make yourself proud, to give yourself that love. Though, to be fair, that's not to say that things aren't happening on a subconscious level here, such as seeking attention and approval and love from others due to how you weren't seen or loved by this father influence growing up. But, Whatever the case may be, you are the types of people who steal the show, Leo Sons, and you pour your heart into whatever you create. And there's also this parental side to your personality <laughs> where you make others feel seen and included as well. In fact, you're probably the types of people who are so good at bringing other people into the group, involving other people. So good at putting other people in the spotlight 
and also so good at giving compliments and seeing the best in others too. And when you see a gift or a talent that somebody else has, you're probably great at encouraging that gift, you know, kind of bringing it out of them and seeking to uplift that person for their gift or for their talent. But at the same time, you're also not afraid to say it like it is. You're gonna be quite honest over what your opinions are as well. Though with that being said, there can also be times whenever you come across as quite demanding and as overbearing. Times when you can act arrogant and boastful where it's like, no, but seriously guys, I'm the best thing since sliced bread. Likewise, there can also be times when you sulk, times when you feel sorry for yourself because maybe something didn't go according to plan or because maybe you didn't get your way. Still though, I don't think you mean any harm whenever you express these traits from time to time. And quite honestly, maybe people get you wrong as well. They often mistaken your me-centered self-expression because maybe they themselves struggle to be openly expressive or perhaps as you act playful and childlike, others mistaken you as being immature and childish when in actuality, it's these people who aren't in touch with their inner child. Which by the way, there's a child at heart side of your personality. <laughs> this part of you that enjoys a good boogie in the kitchen or a good sing-along in the shower. This part of you that is great with children. Though speaking of children, you might thrive whenever you engage with them or maybe you become a parent or maybe if or when you become a parent. You fit into this role so, so well. And in terms of the type of parent you may be, well, you may probably be a parent that is no BS, but who is also fun, who is playful from time to time. And likewise, there's going to be a lot of dignity. There's a lot of dignity when it comes to approaching parenthood. And you may also be the type of parent who truly encourages your children to fully embrace their youth. Then again, maybe you're someone who has embraced your youth with pride and with dignity. And even when you grow older, you still enjoy doing things that tap into your inner child. Though on the flip side of this, perhaps some of you never actually grow up, quite honestly, which might not be the most practical way of living, but it's still that inner childlike spirit that radiates out of you, Leo Sons. I mean, you could be 50 years old still playing tennis, which you started playing whenever you were eight, or you could be 40 still watching Disney movies, these movies that you grew up watching, or you could be 30 as you order your favorite meal since childhood. There's certainly no pressuring you to meet adulting standards, Leo Sons. Though the last thing that I want to say about this is to do with how composed you can be, uh, with how composed you can come across. And I suppose I did mention earlier as well how dignified you can be as well. So it's this idea of being worthy of respect, being worthy of other people's time. Therefore, you won't tolerate rudeness or unkindness from a family member, for example, for example, or you'll also be very upfront when someone else crossed the line with you as another example. And so in this way, sure, yes, you're generous, you're loyal, you're appreciative towards those that you love, but you're also willing to confront a difficult or an unfair situation. Again though, I think that when your ego feels good, when it's expressed in a healthy way, you're more likely to address such things with more confidence. 
But when it feels bruised or when your ego has been hurt, you may A, act out in a dramatic, ruthless, arrogant way, or B, you act out in an insecure, everybody hates me way. Though ultimately, when it comes to your identity, Leo Sons, I think you possess a childlike innocence to your character whilst also possessing a regalness. You possess a warmth to your character whilst also possessing a flamboyance feel. And whatever you choose to create, whether this be a video, a song, a book, or a post, people are most likely going to watch and listen because it's you who manages to entertain others so, so well, whether that feedback be positive or negative. Now, before we do move on to the moon, make sure that you are locating the house placement of the sun because this is going to show you the area of life that this energy is playing out in. And also remember aspects because aspects can show you any difficulties that may arise along with other energies that may influence that sun energy. Okay, so moving on to the moon in Leo. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some key words associated with the moon in astrology, read those key words, take them in. But what does it mean if these key words are being combined with the sign or with the archetype of Leo? Well, it creates an energy of unconscious validation, love and applause, along with an energy of enthusiastic and warm emotional support. Likewise, it creates an energy of childlike feelings and emotions, as well as an energy of dramatic and expressive emotional reactions. Also, it creates an energy of instinctive playfulness and liveliness. And lastly, it creates an energy of loyal and honest caregiving. But what does this specifically say about you if you were born under this moon sign, meaning that you have the moon in Leo natally? Well, it suggests that within your family home growing up, there was plenty of drama and entertainment. There was plenty of self-expression and liveliness. So for example, maybe your family was or is into family parties and get togethers, or maybe there was always some type of drama going on between family members, always some exaggerative wild reaction over who did what, or maybe your family were or are into playing games and doing fun things together. Perhaps they're big into their holidays, or they're big into trips away, or maybe you come from a pretty creative family even. Then again, maybe there were times when family members were a bit too expressive, resulting in things like family feuds and rivalries, or resulting in jealousy and pettiness and people making a ginormous fuss, <laughs> or perhaps competitiveness over attention and applause came into the picture. This could also be a situation where family members would take things too far. Next thing you know, everyone's competing for their opinion to be heard whilst refusing to back down. Essentially, the family home was full of theatrics and emotional performances, but it was also full of fun and lively moments, times whenever family could let their hair down and just enjoy. Maybe you live for these moments, Leo Moons, and you thrive whenever your family or whenever your loved ones are enjoying themselves. Though perhaps it's also you, Leo Moons, that can react to people and situations in this theatrical way. Which by the way, these reactions aren't necessarily outwardly shown, especially if you're in public or if you're with people that you've just met. But when you react to something or someone emotionally, it can be pretty expressive and dramatic it's almost like you're putting on a performance, but it's happening internally. So this could be the likes of a sister hurting your feelings, and then you react by cutting them down to size. Or this could be a friend not being grateful or appreciative. Then next thing, you're sulking and you're taking the whole situation very, very thick. Yeah, you do not like feeling slighted in any way. 
Though on the other hand, let's say that you're enjoying a partner's company and they tell you some great news. You'll most likely react with such enthusiasm. You'll get all excited for them. Or let's say you have a friend who gives you a thoughtful gift. You'll probably react with gratitude and with appreciation. In fact, you're probably the type of people who really enjoy giving your loved ones gifts. You love to shower your family and your loved ones with kind gestures as a way to say, hey, I was thinking about you. But if your generosity is not appreciated, then you'd much rather give your attention to somebody else who appreciates it. I suppose in this respect, this is a difference between the sun in Leo and the moon in Leo, in that the moon in Leo is more likely to take things personally and to heart. Maybe you Leo moons, you are more sensitive to how you are recognized and applauded by your close friends or by your relatives and family members and so on. But the thing about this is that you Leo moons may be less willing to admit that you need attention, that you need applause at times. Leo suns may be more open and more expressive about gaining attention. Um, and they may also be less apologetic about it all. It's like, look at me. <laughs> but you, Leo Moons, mm, maybe not as much perhaps. And maybe a part of the reason for this is because of your pride. It's because of your ego. See, with this being the moon, maybe you're more protective of your ego you're more protective of your dignity and of your pride and your identity. So if someone talks to you with ill intent, it's like, how dare you? How dare you talk to me like that? Or if someone is not seeing the effort that you put in, then you think, what does this person take me for? Do they think I'm a fool? And you may also be quite stubborn in your position. But yet, as you're being protective of your ego, you're also being protective of your heart. Then again, I don't think you necessarily, you're not necessarily aware that this is happening beneath the surface. Still, however, maybe there's a part of you that's protective of your heart because you don't want to get it broken. Or perhaps your heart's been broken in the past by friends, by lovers, by family members, and so, you learn how to shield it from further harm and disappointment. Basically, what I'm thinking here is that there's much sensitivity surrounding your heart and surrounding your ego. And if you're a Leo Moon individual who is listening to this and you're thinking, yep, that is me, then perhaps it would be a good idea to ask yourself why you're so protective of your heart or your ego. Or maybe it would be good to put your pride to the side and try empathizing with other people's feelings from time to time rather than being so absorbed in your own. And I think both you and the Aries moons have this in common, Leo moons, where you can become so caught up and hellbent in your own emotions and feelings and then you don't realize the impact that these things have on others. I also think that there's an element of a childlikeness versus childishness with these moons as well. So on one hand, with the childlikeness, this shows that yes, Leo moons, you are young at heart types of people. But on the other hand, with the childishness, we're noticing here that there's a difficulty with expressing what you need emotionally at times. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna be blunt. I'm gonna be blunt here. Being emotionally caught up in your own self-importance can make it extremely difficult to get close to others or for others to get close to you. And giving off this impression that your emotions are to be the primary focus of attention, well, that might not sit well with people who are also seeking support and comfort. Though I kind of wonder, is this learned behavior? Did you maybe grow up witnessing a mother figure who reacted dramatically whenever she didn't get her way? Or maybe your mother needed attention but she wouldn't openly admit it to herself? Then again, then again, perhaps this mother influence was overbearing, over attentive, always on your tail, never too far behind. Maybe you were spoilt by your mother or maybe 
you consider her to be an extravagant and luxurious person, someone who is materialistic and big into gifts and huge grand gestures, or maybe the mother figure was or is flashy and showy, or perhaps she's prideful and dignified. Maybe you look up to her as this big hearted, warm person, as someone who is generous and confident, but at the same time, you also witnessed her stubbornness and her ruthlessness. Perhaps your mother never wanted to appear as weak or as vulnerable. And so in your eyes, she radiated, she radiated this inner strength. She possessed an inner courage and nobility. Though on the other hand, perhaps there's some of you Leo moons who didn't receive much attention from a mother figure growing up. Maybe you felt unseen or unheard by your family even as a whole. Or maybe something you picked up from your upbringing overall is this same idea of never appearing weak. Therefore, times when you need love, affection and validation from others, for example, Instead of expressing these needs, you don't disclose them because perhaps in your mind it's like, I shouldn't have to ask for something that should be given authentically. Or I shouldn't have to force a friend to tell me that they care about me or that they love me. And you're right, you're right, you shouldn't have to force anything. But at the same time, by not expressing your needs, perhaps the other person is none the wiser. And if you do express your needs of approval, for needs for approval rather, your needs for appreciation, and then your needs are being rejected if they're being shut down, well then you'll know. You'll know who is right for you and who isn't. Honestly, I think you're people who you wish to be treated with respect and with loyalty and with appreciation. And if others can't give you these things, then you're more than willing to go your own way as you focus on yourself. But just be mindful here of your ego. Be mindful of your pride. You know, it's interesting how so many of us find it difficult to be open about what we need from within our relationships. But I think in your case, Leo Moons, you grow to express your emotional needs and feelings more constructively. And with more of a purpose as well. And I suppose that this leads me on to how you show emotional support towards your loved ones. And you might do this with so much warmth and enthusiasm and encouragement. Seriously, you're the, um, the ultimate hype man to friends and loved ones as you cheer them on like, yes, go queen, you're awesome, well done. Though on the other hand, you're also not afraid to tell it like it is, especially to family or to people who feel like family to you. You might actually become angry or upset towards these people if at any time you think they're being disloyal to you or if they're being dishonest with themselves. So you might not be all, there, there. You might not show pity or be super sympathetic, but you'll be real. You'll be bold and brave as you tell them what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. Then again, there can also be times when you burst out in laughter without meaning to. It can be a serious situation and you're sitting there just laughing in stitches. Maybe laughter is how you cope with certain stressful situations. Or maybe you unconsciously have this sunny disposition that you can't necessarily control. Could actually be a situation where laughter is helpful and supportive. Maybe there's times when a friend or a family member or a lover benefits from a good laugh. And what's that term? If you didn't laugh, you'd cry? Yeah, maybe it's you Leo Moons who understand this term all too well and perhaps also Laughter is the best medicine when it comes to your own emotions. Likewise, I think play and fun and spontaneity, these things are tied in with your emotional needs. So taking a fun trip to the beach, for example, or taking some time off work to go on a holiday or to go on a vacation somewhere, or even just, um, doing something on a whim, <laughs> like taking a day to watch movies or play video games. 
anything that lights you up and fuels your fire. Oh, and also your sexual expression might be tied in with your emotional needs and with your emotional satisfaction. So if you're with a sexual partner, for example, maybe it's important to you that they please you or that they're open to being wild in the bedroom, or maybe you lust after someone who is confident and romantic, someone who praises you and gives you plenty of attention. Perhaps you need that validation when it comes to your sexual partners, or maybe you're someone who enjoys pleasing yourself. <laughs> maybe in your eyes, pleasuring yourself is important because it means that you're getting to know yourself and what you like sexually. And when you're romantically involved with someone else, I think what you need from them is for them to listen to your passions and your desires and your interests. You need someone who aligns with you quite well when it comes to these things. Also, whenever you do eventually warm up to a lover or to a friend, I think you're more eager. You're more willing to be the center of attention and you're also more willing to show your vulnerable soft side. So even though I said that there's this side to this that's linked with pride and ego, like I was mentioning earlier, well, there's also a side to this that's linked with feeling safe, feeling secure, you know, feeling protected. And in order for you to feel these things, you must feel like you matter, like you really matter. You must feel like the other person cares as if you take up a significant spot within their life. And so when you feel that love and care and support from a spouse or from a friend or from a relative, perhaps you come out of your shell. Maybe you're louder and you're more entertaining and you're more outwardly expressive. Though the last thing I just want to mention is to do with your creativity and it's to do with your artistic abilities. And it's these things that might also be tied in with your emotional needs. So this idea of having a creative outlet or having a hobby, um, yeah, it's quite important. In fact, it's your creativity that may boost your confidence and make you feel emotionally satisfied. So something as simple as doing a puzzle or painting a picture or baking a cake, making a piece of jewelry, decorating your room, revamping your style, your fashion sense, anything that gets your creative juices flowing. Now, before we do move on to the rising sign slash the ascendant, make sure to locate the house placement of the moon because this is going to show you the area of life that this energy is playing out in. Also remember aspects because aspects can show you any difficulties that may arise along with other energies that may influence that moon energy. Okay, so moving on to the rising slash ascendant in Leo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some keywords associated with the rising sign within astrology, with the ascendant in astrology, read those keywords, take them in. But what does it mean if these words are being combined with the sign or with the archetype of Leo? Well, it creates an energy of a lively, energetic and creative life path and of a self-assured and expressive self-identity. Also, it creates an energy of strong and fierce facial features, along with an energy of willful and sustainable energy levels. Likewise, it creates an energy of a regal demeanor, as well as an energy of confident body movements. But what does this specifically say about you if you were born under this rising sign slash ascendant, meaning that you have the rising slash ascendant in the sign of Leo, natally? Well, it suggests that you see the world through this lens of fun, play, hobbies, enjoyment and entertainment, as well as through a lens of creativity and romance and performance. So you might be the type of person who is eager to go on a night out or on a fun trip, for example, or you might seek out relationships and events and experiences that are fun and exciting or you might be up for going to shows and parties and live entertainment events, or maybe you, con you consciously seek out situations that brighten your mood and aliven your childlike spirit. 
And let's not forget that the world is your stage, Leo Risings, and you are putting on a show, whether you're aware of it or not. In fact, it's you who demands and attracts attention anywhere you go without having to think about it. And if this attention is negative or positive, it probably doesn't really matter because perhaps you understand that everyone is going to have an opinion. Everyone is going to have an opinion of you no matter what you do and no matter how you act. Then again, perhaps these realizations are what you come to learn through using your skills of discernment and discrimination. See, what most people probably don't know about you is how you come from quite the groundbreaking and transformative upbringing. People don't see your scars or your emotional traumas or your intense feelings that can be stressful and difficult to manage whenever you're alone. There's times whenever you cry yourself to sleep or there's times whenever you fear that you'll amount to nothing. People don't see your super, super, and I mean super low points. Instead, what people get is this sunny character, this lighting force who is here to have a good time while showing others how they too can do the same. This person who is here to lift up the room and brighten other people's days. Yeah, we're getting kind of deep here, Leo Risings, but that's okay because I know you can handle it. I know how you're not afraid of facing your inner demons. And I truly believe that it's you who remains strong for everyone else around you. So sure, you might approach the world in this let's enjoy ourselves type of way, but that also comes from a place of emotional understanding and from a place of immense emotional depth. And you know, this kind of reminds me of the character from Grey's Anatomy, uh, Arizona is her name and in Grey's Anatomy she's quite bubbly and very smiley and there's a scene where one of the doctors sort of says to her I don't want to talk about shoes or shopping or something and the thing about this is that above the surface yes it may seem like you know yeah I'm talking about this and it's all fun and playful but in actuality, there's deeper things going on. Um, there's a lot more emotional stuff beneath the surface that she is dealing with and she's very, very much aware of that. Honestly, Leo Risings, others should not mistaken your expressive, playful character as being something that is naive or foolish because in actuality, there's much wisdom to be found in enjoying life and living in the moment living for today. And there's also much wisdom to be found in living for oneself rather than continuously living for other people and their many opinions. However, as I was trying to suggest a moment ago, I think you come to learn such things with time and age and maturity and self-awareness really. Perhaps growing up, you feel or felt shunned or unwelcomed by your community. So for example, Maybe kids in school would tease you for being different and so you thought that you had to hide the things that made you different in an attempt to fit in or be liked. Or maybe your friendship circles were unusual and strange as you would often think, where do I belong here? Where is my place? Or maybe you often feel like an outcast which you don't actually like and so there's been times when you would force yourself to join in. You would force yourself to be involved and included. Maybe you hate that feeling of being left out. And so you do everything within your power to be liked and admired by others. But then reality sets in and you realize that not everybody is going to like you or accept you and nor should they have to. But then vice versa, you shouldn't have to like or accept others either. And so you start to come to the realization that you have the power to express yourself authentically, but you don't have the power to control what other people think of your self-expression. And to be honest, why would you want to? I'm sure it can get exhausting after a while anyway. Now this is interesting because some astrologers do associate the rising sign slash the ascendant with the life path and then the sun sign with the person in which we are striving to become. 
And so in your case, Leo Risings, perhaps your life path is that of expressing yourself, being authentic, deciding who you want to associate yourself with, not out of fear or worry or insecurity, but out of desire, out of want, out of freedom of choice. And so therefore, I think you come to learn who aligns with your path in this life and who doesn't. You sort of take what you value and you leave the rest. And when it comes to your sun sign, well, guess what? The sun is your chart ruler. So make sure that you're locating the sun for more information about your self-expression and your identity and your purpose and so on. And also keep in mind that this sun placement will give you more insight into the type of individual in which you are striving to become Leo Risings. Plus also consider those other 11 houses throughout the chart. Though another thing about you that I want to mention is just how easily you stand out and how effortlessly you make an impression on others. But I also think these things about yourself are what you grow to appreciate as well. However, on the other hand, I also think there may be times, especially when you're younger and you're not so self-aware and you're a bit more, you're a bit more immature, there may be times whenever you try too hard to keep up a specific image of yourself and in the process you overcompensate. So for example, maybe you hate feeling embarrassed. It's not a nice feeling, but then you say something like, oh, you know, I totally meant to do that. You know, you've just done something embarrassing and it's like, yeah, yeah, I meant that guys. Or let's say for example, you feel insecure in your body you analyze it more than people know, then what you do is you start flaunting your body on Instagram, like, look how much I love myself, guys. Like, I love my body, self-love. But yet five minutes ago, you were pulling at your skin and you were talking down to yourself. But again, I think that as you mature, as you become more self-aware, you start to recognize times whenever you overcompensate for your feelings and thoughts of lack and unworthiness versus times whenever you confidently and gladly say, you know what, I am accepting of myself, warts and all. And then furthermore, you're also able to say things like, yeah, I messed up or yeah, that was my fault. But at the same time, you're also able to say things like, no, that was not my mistake or that's not my responsibility. In fact, I think that it's through such lessons that you gain more respect, not only for yourself, but also more respect from others. And you grow into a much more dignified individual. This person who can actually inspire others to follow their authentic calling, their authentic life path, someone who leads and does so with strength and self-assurance and confidence, then again, another thing to be aware of is to not let your attractive influence get in the way of being humble and grounded. Basically, try not to get a big head or an inflated ego. Also try not to come across as self-absorbed whilst being uninterested of other people's opinions and ideas. Because to be blunt, People do not often take well to conceited, self-serving types. Though to be fair, maybe some people you come across are also this way, which would be quite the battle. Still, however, perhaps something to learn here is actually how to be open to other people's advice and constructive criticisms. Then again, maybe you think, I am great as I am. I don't need advice from others. And sure, yes, perhaps you shouldn't have to listen to other people's advice, especially if they don't know you personally. I mean, no, but I still think there's a part, okay? There's a part of you that seeks to know what other people think of you anyway. There's a part of you I think that is quite curious about what the collective thinks, about what the collective says. You sort of want to know what other people are chatting about, what the gossip is. And like I said at the beginning of this section, right, you grow to understand that everyone is going to have an opinion of you, no matter what you do and no matter how you act. But 
It's your skills of discrimination and discernment that help you sort through all of that noise. It's these skills that can help you identify which advice is beneficial and useful, whilst also identifying which advice is unnecessary and it's impractical. But in order for you to get to this critical thinking stage, you gotta put your pride and your ego to the side, Leo Risings. You gotta implement a little bit of humility. Now, this doesn't mean beating yourself up in your mind or being super hard on yourself nor should it mean guilt tripping yourself when you make a mistake, which at the same time, you may partake in these types of behaviors, which are not healthy here, Leo Risings, but rather it's about observing things with reason, with rationale, with practicality. And it's these types of qualities and skills that you grow to understand and appreciate with self-awareness. So sure, you are not here, you're not on this earth to be everyone's cup of tea. It's not your purpose to be liked and admired by all. However, when it comes to being a leader, when it comes to being this king or this queen figure, well, you also need people. People who respect you, people who appreciate you, people who can help you and support you. And quite honestly, I think a part of your journey is that of understanding others as your equal. So this idea then of being able to communicate with fairness or listening with the desire to learn from others or interacting with others with grace and elegance and refinement. Maybe for you, it's about getting the balance right. <laughs> or maybe it's about leading with honesty and loyalty and dignity rather than leading in a power hungry competitive manner. Now, when it does come to your physical appearance and your facial features, you might possess a fierceness or a wildness, this look that is strong and regal. In fact, you might come across as intimidating to others. Sometimes, especially given that you typically approach situations, situations with such confidence and with a radiance about you, you might also possess amazing eye-catching hair, hair that certainly leaves an impression, and you might also do all sorts of wild and crazy things with your hair. Um, oh, and another thing, you know how to grab an audience with your outfit choices and with your fashion sense, you know, with that style of yours. Uh, furthermore, when it comes to your energy levels, well, you might possess a great deal of energy, provided that you're feeling good about yourself, of course. So on days whenever you feel on fire, as if you're unstoppable, you'll most likely do all the things You'll be moving about your day, completing your tasks and your responsibilities like a boss. You'll be enthusiastic, you'll be inspirational and motivated. But on days whenever you feel doubtful, sluggish, critical of yourself, maybe you don't do as much or maybe you know when to take a step back for your sanity and for your well-being. Still though, whenever you're on, whenever you're lit up, then you're more willing and eager to take on the day. And the more you can use your creativity, the better. Which following on from this point, you're probably super creative and artistic uh, types of people. And so you thrive when it comes to activities and hobbies that tap into these things. Just a quick side note though, when it does come to your energy levels, make sure that you are locating Mars uh, within the chart uh, because Mars does rule over things like our energy levels and motivation and drive within astrology. Therefore, it's this placement of Mars that can perhaps tell a different story to what I'm saying today, but it may also add to the story. Though the last thing that I just want to mention is to do with finding a hobby or an interest or some type of creative activity that you love, that you enjoy. And maybe a part of your life path is that of discovering what these things are. Maybe for you, you feel called to start certain hobbies, which then blossom into something more, into something super exciting and great. Maybe it's important to you that you have some type of spur time pursuit 
or some type of creative outlet that you're generally genuinely interested in and oh my gosh whenever you find that thing you become a proper fan you might go all out as you pour your heart and your soul into whatever the interest or passion is so maybe going to the gym is what you love doing or creating posts on Instagram is something you like to do or perhaps skating is what you enjoy or writing songs is what you love most. The whatever it is that grabs your attention Leo Risings, you will most likely <laughs> make it your thing. Okay then Cosmic Warriors, so that concludes my very long video all about the differences between the Leo Sun, the Leo Moon and the Leo Rising. Now if you happen to have any thoughts and opinions on today's video then certainly let us know what you thought in the comment section down below. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching, thank you for subscribing and of course if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed then make sure that you click that subscribe button and also make sure that you give this video a like remember and I will be back with another video very very soon. Bye!